Thus far, we've seen that it's pretty easy to predict what charge an element will be when it becomes an ion. For metals in groups 1a and 2a, their ion's charges will just be plus 1 and plus 2, respectively. For aluminum over here in group 3a, its ion's charge is just plus 3. Conversely, for nonmetals in groups 5a, 6a, and 7a, their ion's charges respectively become minus 3, minus 2, and minus 1. The question now becomes, what about metals in the middle of the D block, the region indicated here? Well, as it turns out, many of the metals in the D block, which are called transition metals, can exist as ions with various different charges depending on what they're bonded to. For example, iron, abbreviated as Fe and shown here, can exist as either a plus 2 ion or a plus 3 ion depending on what it's bonded to. Similarly, copper, abbreviated as Cu, shown here, can exist as either a plus 1 or a plus 2. Similarly confusing and often unpredictable trends arise all over the transition metals in the D block. Now don't worry, I'm not going to make you memorize all of the different charges that each individual D block element can attain. I do, however, just want you to understand that there is a lot more variety in them, because this will become important in the next slide. When we name ionic compounds like sodium chloride, we follow these rules. The atom on the left, which is the cation, sodium in this case, is just given its regular name. If it's not in the D block, now if it is in the D block, then it's given its regular name with a Roman numeral after it to indicate its charge. I hope that makes sense. Remember that D block elements sometimes can have varied charges. So for those elements, if they are the cations, we have to specify what positive charge they have by putting brackets next to their name, and inside the brackets we put a Roman numeral indicating what charge they have. The anion, Cl in this case, is given its regular name, chlorine or fluorine, except at the end of it, it's replaced with the suffix ide. So in this case, it's chloride. So this molecule will be called sodium chloride. Which brings us to some gnarly problems. The correct name for MgF2 is what? Now let's think about this for a second. In order to properly do this problem, we have to look at Mg and ask ourselves the question, is this atom, Mg, in the D block? Now as it turns out, it is not. So where is it? Well, it's in group 2, which means that it has a positive 2 charge as a cation. What is the name of Mg? Why, it's magnesium. So using the rules that we had in the previous slide, you'll note that the first part of the name is going to be magnesium. Now what about this F here? What is F? It's fluorine. Now note that when fluorine becomes an anion in an ionic compound, as this one is here, it now gets the end of it replaced with the suffix ide. Hence, this molecule is called magnesium fluoride. Now note that this subscript 2 next to the fluoride doesn't change the name in any way. We don't have to say difluoride or bifluoride or something like that. It's just magnesium fluoride, which is letter E. Let's take a look at the next one here. The correct name for FeCl3 is what? Now we're first of all going to look at Fe and ask ourselves, is this element in the D block? Now you'll note by looking at your periodic table that indeed it is. Now because this element, Fe, is in the D block, we have to put Roman numerals next to its name to indicate what its charge is. Now what is the name of Fe? That element is iron. So to start this element's name out, we're going to say iron. The question is, what charge does Fe have to have? Well, in order to balance out, we have to look over here at the anion. Chloride, you'll note by looking at the periodic table, is going to want to have a minus 1 charge. Each of these chlorides is going to have a minus 1 charge, but note that there are three of them. Hence, the overall minus charge that the Fe, the iron atom, has to balance out is minus 3. Hence, this iron has to be a plus 3 charge. So the final name for this molecule is going to be iron, with Roman numeral 3, chloride. Now note, we don't have to say trichloride or dichloride or anything like that. For ionic compounds, we do not use any uh, prefix di, tri, or anything like that. 
associated with this subscript. So the final answer is iron 3 chloride. Now I hope that makes sense. We have to put the Roman numerals there to uh, distinguish between iron 3 versus a circumstance where we might have iron 2. And here are some more questions. The correct name for Al203 is what? And I'll let you figure that out. And another one, the correct name for FeCl2 is what? Now you'll note distinguishing this molecule from the last one we had in the previous slide, the iron here has to be a plus 2 instead of a plus 3. Hence, the answer to this question is going to be iron 2 chloride, which is answer A.